Hey folks, Adam D here, and we're going to be continuing in our access control module and specifically going into other types of access control. Um, and so we've, we've talked about it and we looked at like how the Unix and POSIX model of access control list works. And that's super important. You're going to have like going over this in the modules, but we want to talk about other types of ideas, right? Because that's not the only type of model. And as we saw, you can't, uh, the, the permissions there are very kind of coarse grained because you um can only give reader write access to either your user your group or everyone else and so um to actually do that precisely and with like least principle of mind it involves creating a lot of groups and can be very complicated uh, but there's other kind of ideas in access control when you think about how do we give people access to systems uh, one of the thing that probably impacts your life all the time if you're using like a streaming service like spotify or netflix or something like that um is uh, basically on content, so like uh, DRM, other types of things is you may have uh, controls that are actually um, access control that depends on the content that's being seen. So for instance, you may be at a certain level in your company and you can only see people's salaries that are less than 50K in the system. And this may be a policy that as an organization you wanna implement and you want an access control system that's able to actually do this. Uh, you can only see the salaries of employees who report to you, right? So you can see that there's like these notions of the actual organization structure and what the organization wants and how to control the information and who can access what information. Uh, other important things are, are context dependent controls, right? The POSIX model that we saw didn't depend on context at all, but uh, for instance, Context can be incredibly important. So maybe you can't access certain information through the corporate VPN. So from remote systems, you can't access certain information. You have to actually be on site, on premise uh, to be able to access those, right? Again, this is about reducing risk. Although, of course, the other thing to think about is, especially in today's day and age with people working from home, that can be incredibly annoying and really frustrating. Um, other things like salary information can only be updated only at year's end, and maybe that's actually part of the access control. So you can think about a file or some kind of information that's only writable at certain times. Um, other types of things like uh, information be is, can be very sensitive only around certain times. So for instance, when companies report their quarterly earnings, it's very confidential until it's announced at the shareholders meeting, and then it's like available to the entire world. Other types of context dependent controls that you can think about are like, how do you, um, you think about like a hospital setting, you, we could probably all agree. We want pretty stringent and strict access controls to buildings, even thinking physically, right? Well, not all doctors should be able to access all things, but if there's an emergency happening and people need to get into a room, you actually want that context of the emergency to be able to do something, uh, going forward. Um, so it's kind of like other types of access control ideas. And we're going to um, kind of broadly categorize access control models into three different models. And we're going to deep dive into one of them in the rest of this module. Um, but the type that we've actually already looked at, which you're very familiar with, is this POSIX model. So discretionary access control, right? The owner of a file can choose to change the permissions on the file and give people different access. Um, so the owner of the object can control who can access that object. And that's with a lot of things, many things that we're familiar with. And if you even remember way back when we started this module and talking about the um, homework system, uh, the uh, shared server, right? This can cause pro a discretionary access control prob uh, can cause problems because a user can inadvertently make their files readable to somebody else because they own the file. Therefore, they can decide the permissions on that. And so there are aspects and areas where that becomes very much not what you want. And we're going to deep dive into one of those in the next uh, video. But what this uh, then brings a different access where it's called mandatory access control or like Mac. And so the idea is that the system controls who can access an object. So for instance, in a mandatory access control system on that shared server, the system administrator, let's say it's me, the professor, can have a mandatory access control policy that says no user can see anything in the other user's home directories, right? And it doesn't matter if you own a file, you cannot change that and make it so that somebody else can see your file. So the system itself controls that. And as we'll see, there's actually a nice model that uh, helps how you think about it, which then um, controls how uh, 
information can flow and you can do nice theoretical proofs to prove that no information can leak from a system. <coughs> Uh, another type of access access control model is originator controlled access control. So this is actually closer to the DRM example I was talking about. So the whoever creates the object or creates the data controls who can access the object. And this is how actually a lot of digital rights management and DRM technology works is you get something on your system that can only be played through your computer system or your HDMI cables or whatever. And if you tried to give that data to somebody else, they're not able to see that. And you can see how, as a company, you'd want that, right? An organization may want to control the data that it propagates so that when I give you data, you can't just give it to somebody else. Of course, actually enforcing this with technical measures is quite difficult. Um, then from here, there are other types of access control systems. As you go further, you can learn more about these things. Um, these things try to model kind of what is similar, like how people approach these things. And this actually is a very natural way of expressing access control. So we, we, you know, on the POSIX model, we had owners and groups and users. Um, but really, when we think about that, we want to, you know, groups are a nice way of grouping people. But what we actually kind of want is an access control system that models an organization. And so role based access control or RBAC is something super important where what you can access is determined by your role. So this makes sense when we talked about a uh, grading system, right? Where professors, right? If you're the role of a professor, then you can do this, right? Or if you're the pr a professor and an instructor of a course, then you can do something to that course, right? Upload and change grades. If you're a student, you can see your own grade, but you can't see other students' grades and you can't change grades. So rather than focusing on identity, which is what discretionary access control, who are you? Or um, as we'll see with mandatory access control, uh, what can you have access to based on your classification or clearance? Uh, this is determined by the user's role. What's your actual role? And it's a very natural way of expressing what like businesses want. Whereas other types of ways are thinking about access control, uh, attribute-based access control. So users have different attributes. They have maybe an age, an ID number, the groups that they're involved with, a role. You can think of this as like a abstraction of role, right? Role is just one attribute you have as a user, but maybe as an organization, you want to make a complex Boolean expression on the policy based on attributes. So you can say, oh, uh, only uh, managers that, um, that work in this organization that are on this project have access to this data. And so that can be a very natural type of access control. So uh, these are kind of different ways of thinking about access control models and we're going to deep dive into um, mandatory access control in the next video. So see you then.